Thanks for coming. Well, David, how are you? It's been, what, a pretty crazy four days, wasn't it? Yeah, everything was good until Brooklyn. Uh, you know, last night was a bad night, but hopefully uh, we, we, got, we, got our, uh, we got it together now and that doesn't happen again. Yeah, so I mean, let, let, let's touch on that. What, why, from your perspective, was it a bad night? Well, at one point, you know, Floyd's guys walked over to where uh, we were and all Connor's guys, you know, jumped in there. It was that close to turning into a, a brawl on that stage. And I'm too old for that shit. What was actually said between the teams? What's that? What was actually said between the teams? Lots of not nice things. <laughs> Lots racist? of mean stuff. Was it racism between them? Ah, oh, Jesus. Listen. What's going on right now between these guys is as much a part of the fight as the fight itself. These are two of the best to ever do it, physically and mentally and verbally. And you've seen that this week. They've been unbelievable, you know? And it has escalated every event because what happens is, just like in a fight, when you get hurt to the body, you try not to show that you get hurt to the body. When you get rocked, you try not to show that you got rocked. And they've both been rocked a couple times and tried to show, like, you know, not show it. Um, and the, um, the battle that's gone on between these guys has been epic. And, and it's always the media that wants to pump up the, you know, you know, oh, is this a fight? This isn't a croquet game, you know, this isn't a, a, a tennis match. The, the, these guys are gonna try to knock each other unconscious in a month and a half. I don't think there's too many mean things you can say that's worse than getting knocked unconscious. So, Daniel, what do you make of this, this whole race? Right? Do you believe that things just been blown up for Washington? I don't know if it's uh, of the what? Of, of this alleged race route, like McGregor's a racist. Yeah, so, so what, what happened was how this whole thing got started, as soon as we left LA, um, uh, Connor was saying to him, he had come over and he was dancing, and Connor started doing this. Yeah, dance for me, boy, dance for me. And that was how the whole, and then he said, the stripper thing, you got 50 strippers under your, uh, uh, on your payroll. That's what he was talking about, he was treating him. And then Floyd came out yesterday, <laughs> apparently he was treating me and uh, Connor like strippers and throwing ones at us. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, no, I don't think, that, so then the whole, everybody was talking about the racial thing, and then Connor came out and said, you know, what he said last night at, at the, uh, uh, in Brooklyn, you know, about, yeah, I'm, I'm half black from the belly button down. Um, so this, you know, it's just, this, this, is, this is what they do. I don't, I don't think that there's any racial, you know, he's being racist. He also called out 50 Cent last night, and you know, he's, he, he's got, listen, he's got 50 Cent talking about it, he's got Jay-Z talking about it, you know, he's, he's, he's dragged a lot of people into this thing. And uh, I think that the, uh, on both sides of this, it's been brilliant. I think they've both done. It's been incredible to watch. If, if you're truly a fan of combat sports, if you truly know what's going on here, pretty damn good. Do you see Connor as having more chance as this has gone on getting inside? This is Connor's game. This is what Connor does. Listen, Floyd hasn't been matched physically or verbally in, in boxing. Now he has. He's, he's, the verbally he has, now we'll see what happens physically, you know? Because, um, like I said, if you, if you know about fighting, if you're a true fan and you know what's going on in fighting, I, I was talking about that idiot. Who's the idiot on ESPN? Neil Everett. What's a Neil Everett in the United States? I'm tired of this, this shtick and this, this shtick. It's not a shtick. This isn't shtick. This, this is, this is, this is uh, verbal combat at its finest. You don't see guys go at each other like this, intelligent, you know, trying to dig in there and, 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 and uh, find ways to, to, to mentally, you know, get in each other's heads. That's, that's, that's what these guys are doing, and, and, and these are two of the best to ever do it. It's been fascinating to watch. Are they going back every night and analyzing it? Is that what you're saying? Oh, are they coming back for another 100%, time? that's exactly what they're doing. 100%, you know. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very good. Very good. What, what was the goal of the World Tour in terms of going to three countries, four straight nights, and has it accomplished that goal? Um, yeah, so, so, you know, we wanted to do this World Tour, obviously, you know, 
uh, we talked about going to Texas too, and um, you know, obviously Dublin made a lot of sense, but there's no way Floyd was going to go to Dublin. Did it directly say no in oh, Dublin? Oh, absolutely. It was, I mean, this is close to Dublin. We're in London, and this is this is hostile territory for him right now. Imagine if we we're in Dublin. I mean, that guy's got to go stay at a hotel somewhere, and you know, get in a car and drive somewhere. I I, I, I wouldn't go to Dublin either if I was him. I don't blame him. Did you ask him? Like, did you ask him personally if you were going to Dublin? No, I, Al Heyman. Yeah, I talked to Al Heyman about it. He's like, yeah, we're not going to Dublin. <laughs> Dana, um, Connor was making three about three million in his uh, last fight. Now he's going to be making it's not true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be making a lot more for this one. I mean, how confident are you that after this fight, he's still going to have the motivation to continue fighting? With yeah. You can never be confident about that. Um, you know, we, we just we just sold the company a year ago, and there were a lot of guys that I work with that are young guys that made a lot of money, and they're gone. <laughs> they're sitting home doing nothing. So. Uh, you know, you, you can say that you think you'll stick around, and Connor can say, you know, I'm going to fight again this year, but you don't know. <clears throat> you don't know until you get that check and cash it, whether you're going to stick around or not. That's when you find out if you really love what you're doing, especially in the fight business, you know. It takes a certain type of person to want to get out of bed and get punched in the face every day when you got that much money in the bank. Yeah, so when you go back to talk about the world tour again, you're going, you're scuttling out places, and just for a press conference, the thought process behind it, it has it accomplished the goal that you guys wanted? Um, you, you know, I, I don't know if there were, you know, as far as accomplishing goals, the, the, the thing about the press tour and doing this press conference it, 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 it was to see this thing play out between these two. So there was this talk about these two fighting, right? I said, no, this isn't going to happen. Started to build up with the fans, started to build up with the media, and then it gets to the point where I'm on ESPN one day and I said, you know what? I'll give you $25 million, Floyd, for this fight. He hangs his watch out the window to TMZ and tells him, you know, I don't know if the watch cost $25 million or what the deal was, but, you know, I got a really expensive watch and, uh, you know, $25 million is a joke. And that started the negotiation process. And from right there, it just, it went so fast. And realistically, this was the first time we were going to see these two together in the same room, face to face and, and, and you know, verbally going at it. And we started to pick off cities that, that, that we wanted to go to. And, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be big. But, I mean, Staples Center sold out like that. Barclays sold out like that. We had to get a bigger venue in Toronto, uh, do like 16500 because the other one was too small. And then London, 10 minutes. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been incredibly successful. And, and I think that, um, you know, a fight that people were already excited about, people are just insane about now. Right, now just going back to McGregor's future, firstly, what does your instinct say about what he'll do next? And secondly, have you planned for the worst case scenario where he doesn't fight for UFC again? Um, no, I mean, that's that, I'm, I'm going to be dealing with that for the rest of my career. Um, back in the day, people were like, what are you going to do when Chuck Liddell's gone? What are you going to do when George St. Pierre's gone? This is, this is bigger though, isn't it? Nah, it's, 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 it's all the same, man. Listen, Michael Jordan didn't play basketball forever. No athlete can, can continue to go on forever. And my job, and what they pay me to do, is to continue to find young and up-and-coming talent and, and, uh, and, 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 and cultivate it and find them. You're never going to find another Conor McGregor. I call him the unicorn, but you go out and you find another star. What's your instinct about what you're doing next? Do you think you will have him back? I do. I think he'll, I think he'll, I actually, I talked to Ari a couple of days ago and we were talking about, you know, believe me, Conor McGregor's a, a huge part of this company and we're going to make him feel like it. And the thing is to come back, you know, looking at this from a UFC business standpoint, is the whole, if, if you're looking at the, you know, the positive, it's the whole possibility that the, the media attention that Conor gets from this makes his next pay-per-view, the next thing he does from the UFC, ten times bigger and makes your business even bigger as well. Oh my god, yeah, I mean, Imagine if he knocks Floyd Mayweather out. He'll show up to press conferences seven hours late. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You know, I'll tell you this. I've, I've been in this business for a long time. It's awesome working with Conor McGregor. He, he is a special individual, and uh, he makes this fun. Actually, say that he seems adamant that 
Why is that so bad? Well, he, I don't know how desperate the fight could be in Russia, but he, he said to me, he says, uh, I, I want to fight again this year, and I want to go to Russia, and I want to fight Khabib in Russia. But that's one of the million reasons why he's a huge star that, and, and why people love this guy. Um, nobody does that. You know, nobody wants to go fight Khabib in Russia, um, but he does. And if you look at anybody who's ever been successful, it's because they've taken risks. Conor McGregor is always willing to lay it on the line. He's going into a boxing match against Floyd Mayweather, you know, um, and all the other things that he's done on the way up. And now talking about Khabib in Russia. I don't know what he does or doesn't do, but it would be weird if he didn't watch tapes on his, uh, or somebody in his camps watching tapes and coaching him through what to do, yeah. Teddy, you've known Conor for a long time before he was this huge star. How has fatherhood changed him in his last few weeks? How has this changed him? Fatherhood. Oh, fatherhood? I haven't seen anything yet, just, you know, uh, of him changing from fatherhood, but, uh, you know, He's happy. He's, you know, he's, he's ecstatic that he's that, that he, uh, you know, with his situation right now. And uh, anybody who's a dad knows it's the greatest thing in the world. So, you know, you, 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 you know, I think as as his baby continues to get older, you know, and, and his son, you know, you, you, you're into cars and watches and you know all that stuff. You start to realize there's nothing better, you know, than, than actually your kids. You know, so uh, I, I think it'll help ground him a lot more. When expected. What's that? Did anything happen this week between Conor and Floyd that you weren't expecting? Or did something happen? Nah, just, you know, I, I didn't know how the, uh, you know, verbally how it would go and everything else. It's been outstanding. It's been, it, it doesn't get any better than this week. The, you know, the, the, the mental warfare game between these two is, what's happened this week is, is some of the best you'll ever see, ever. I think this week's been absolutely incredible. This been brilliant. Do you think the fight can live up to how great this week has been? I hope so. Listen. Who in here can tell me the last time they saw Conor in a boring fight, you know? Um, and, and I think it's gonna be the same in boxing. I, I, I think that you, you know how bad Conor wants this and, and how Conor will go in there and he will try to knock Floyd Mayweather out, whether it, you know, it, it's to his demise or, or whether he wins, he's gonna go in there and fight. Because for me, at the end of the day, you know, all the buildup for the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, you know, and that fight sucked, and I, and, and I think it was very damaging, not just to, you know, boxing, but to combat sports as a whole, especially, you know, when you talk about pay-per-view buys. And every time, I believe me, I, I put on 42 events a year, and I sweat every one of them, you know, because I'm always, I always want the show to be great, I want people to turn off the TV or leave the arena and go, all right, that was worth it, you know? But I have no control over that, but it's one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy. And, uh, I just, I just hope it's a good fight. Are you going to put money on Conor to win? <laughs> no, no, I'm not betting on this thing. Um, we, we kind of have a policy, you know, that we don't bet on our own fights. Because if anything crazy ever happened, be like, this guy had three million dollars on the fight. Of course, this is the way it went. It's all fixed and it's all rigged, and you're way better off just not betting on the fight. The other thing is, I'm already betting on the fight. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm all in. I'm chips all in on Conor McGregor. So, you know. I, it wasn't that he doesn't have a chance, it was just like, it makes no sense. Because how, how does that help my business? How does, how does this work for my business? That's what I kept saying, right? Listen, they want to fight? Hey Floyd, come on over to the octagon. We'll get you out of there in about two seconds, right? That was my attitude, but you know, Connor wanted this thing and, and, and you know, started pushing hard for it. And I kept telling him, did you see how long it took to make Mayweather Pacquiao, right? Well, it just goes to show you what an asshole Bob Arum is. <laughs> Which we all already knew, but now we really know. Because um, when I sat down with these guys and actually started talking, this deal moved incredibly fast. You know, Floyd's surrounded by some really intelligent guys. When you're dealing with smart guys, you can get things done. The problem in my business is I deal with a lot of guys who think they're smart, and they're not. And that's the worst. How have you been dealing with Al Hayman the next issue? Incredible. It was great. What about in terms of sharing the promotional burden as part of not maybe being able to make unilateral decisions? 
What, say that again? What about in terms of sharing kind of the promotional burden and not being able to make kind of unilateral decisions and having to put the other camp on this? Yeah, well, I made that decision myself. I made the decision that, you know, I didn't want, we were going to do a boxing match under Mayweather promotions. You know, I, I don't, we don't need to get the UFC involved or do UFC fights or any of that stuff. It's going to be a boxing match, so. Is this a one-off or could this be something that could be repeated in the future? Because I mean, in the, in the past you've said that you would never cope with anybody. I mean, is this a one-off or is this something that could happen? That's a one-off. This is a, listen, I, 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 I'm not looking to, for the next two years, I'm going to have every guy in the UFC wanting to box somebody, you know what I mean? But the reality is this, these were two of the right guys at the right time in the right place and that's why it's such a big fight. All, all these other boxing matches between my guys just, just aren't this big. Dana, the other thing that's been very impressive is your intros. <laughs> How's your throat as Bruce Buffer still got a job? Yeah, well, here's the thing. I, I, you know, obviously, boxing uh, uh, press conferences are way different than mine. But I, I'm of the belief that there's only two people that everybody wants to hear from, Floyd and Connor. And in boxing, you got nine guys going up there and giving speeches that nobody wants to hear from. You know, if if you want if you want to hear from me, ask me a question and I'll answer it. But other than that, man, I just kick it over to Connor. That's who you're here to see. That's the question. Is Bruce Buffer's job? No, Bruce Buffer's job is, is solidified. Believe me. Since the fight's been made, has it caused any rifts within the UFC division with the fighters? Has it caused any any rifts with other fighters? Yeah, they got the old pay for it. Not yet, but you know, when this thing's over and guys start saying, "Hey, I want to box this guy and that guy," and I tell them no, then it probably will. Hey, one of the main things that Conor has yet to achieve in his UFC career is that he spoke about is fighting at Croke Park. Is there now pressure on you guys to arrange such an event in order to bring him back? Guys, you know that we could have done this event today at Croke Park, and it probably would have sold out. It would have been insane. Imagine that. But yeah, um, we have talked about Croke Park many times, and um, you know, even when we, were, when we were thinking about doing it, there were a lot of restrictions on us doing events and it not getting over at the right time and everything else. So th there would have to be some things that we would work out there. But the answer is hell yeah, we'd go to Croke Park. Any other questions? Dana, you talked about looking after Connor if he comes back to the UFC. Does that includes part ownership? <laughs> Let's just, uh, let me just put it this way: we'll, we'll, we we will uh, we'll make him happy. We'll make him happy. You know, he's 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 very important to this company. He's always been a stand-up guy. He, you know, when we've been in bad situations, he's he's done what no other fighter has ever done. He'll take a fight. He he will fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. Lots of people say it. I'm the guy on the phone asking him to do it. I know who does and who doesn't. Conor McGregor is the unicorn. He is the unicorn. To, to, I, I said never what? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt him anymore, man. You know, when we were on the world tour with Jose Aldo, he kept saying to everybody, "I'm going to knock this guy out in the first round." And I was like, "Man, you better pump the brakes." You know, this is the greatest 145 pounder ever, the only 145 pound champion in the UFC, and you know, I just didn't see him knocking him out in the first round. He knocked him out in 13 seconds, so I don't doubt this kid anymore. Uh, Dana, just lastly, what does success look like on August 27th, from your perspective? When this is all over, what does success look like? What, what does what look like? Success. Success? Like, success oh. for the for you. Connor said I will knock this man out within four rounds. <laughs> oh my god. If, you know, <laughs> if he knocks Floyd Mayweather out in four rounds, that would be, uh, it's going to be insane. It's going to be absolute insanity and all the people. All the people who said this fight was a joke and this was ridiculous and all this stuff. Um, what do you say to that? Good? Thanks, guys. Thanks.